Well, one of my favorite times of year to fish is in the fall. You know, we've got October, November key times. You gotta remember in the fall, the fish have to fatten up for the winter and they go on the major feed. Today I'm on the Columbia River and we expect very cool things. We can get fish, big fish. I'm talking four or five pound rings on the dry fly, big October caddis. We've got nymphine, we've got bulldogs, we've got walleye. Guess what? You got everything this time of year. So that's today as we take you sport fishing on the fly. Gave it three runs through with the indicator. You know, we had a fish on, I had a couple other takes that I missed. So now, again, as I mentioned earlier, you work the indicator, you work your nymph through. You know, it's fairly shallow water. Now I'm gonna take out my, my lighter full sink setup. So it's a type six, full sink line. I'm gonna put on my favorite little bulldog, probably Don's personal bulldog, and work that through. And then I've got a chance for some bigger rainbow and also for some walleye. And then later on, I'm gonna put on, like I said, some really big, something big and nasty, big purple, something big and ugly, and get some walleye down here deep. But let's head back up and I'm gonna change the setup right now. Full sink line. Oh, that's good. Went with the bulldog through, and right when I figured we were getting in the zone, this guy hit. It looks like well, I thought it was a walleye at first, but it's fighting more like a rainbow now. Maybe it is. Nope, that's a rainbow. That's a nice ball. Oh, another good one. So, as I mentioned earlier, you go through with the uh, go through with the indicator first, and then you put on the bulldog or you know another bugger or some some attractor streamer. You know, the, the, the big the rainbows in the wallet they just can't resist those streamer patterns. And this guy hitting, he's a nice one. Look at him down there. That's a that's a beautiful fish. Oh, wow. Just gorgeous there. Okay, you know all the clones. We're gonna get some big guys feeding potentially on dry a little bit later once they get cranked up. Right now, oh, a nice fat, healthy guy. There he is there. Let's hold him up real quick again. Try to not keep him in the net. There he is there. You know, beautiful chrome colors. Real nice bow. Just all the same size all this time of year, and there he goes. You know that 18 to 20 inch that we're gonna get. And eventually, when we do get into some of these runs where I know the bigger guys hold, you know, we can get them up to 24 to 26. But they, you gotta remember, this time of year, I'm fishing, you know, anywhere from that four to eight feet of water. Some of these big guys along the shoreline, they go way into the riffle runs. Like you'll catch fish in that deep of water on dry flies, like big October caddis. And we're gonna show you that a little later. And I'm hoping today they slide into that shallow water because it is, it's outstanding. You can't beat it. But there it is, little bulldog. Don's personal bulldog. Always a winner this time of year and actually spring, summer, or spring, fall. Can't beat it. It's one of the best patterns that we've ever come up with. Fantastic. in that zone it's unreal what a great time of year can't stress it enough everybody's out hunting you know right now the date's october 14th you know it is in the fall and that's what i found is you know once it cools off once the water temperature gets down in the 50s again it gets pretty these rainbows get really aggressive oh and there's another nice bow look at that look at the colors on this one he's gorgeous color it went just on a scream and run and now he's coming in oh just fantastic and look at they're just just ripping that bulldog they are they just want it they're trying to eat it I mean they're not hesitating on it they're just grabbing it okay let's gonna get this guy in again there he's there and look at they're all just clones right now probably that you know that 18 inch range that guy took it right on the end there it is 
There's the bulldog. Oh, look at the colors on this fish. I'm gonna wet my hands. This one is just pretty colors. Look at that. Look at the colors on that fish. Right, just a male, nice big male, probably 18 plus. Oh, ho, ho, ho. just gorgeous. I'm gonna turn him upstream. And again, don't handle him very often. He's still got lots of spunk. And he's gonna go right away. There he goes, wow. Outstanding. Just doesn't get any better. So right now, I'm looking down, it's probably eight feet of water. And again, these fish are all gonna sit in this tail out. So you can see right up at the head, it's really shallow. They're not, haven't moved really into that shallow run yet. I've only had a couple of hits up there, but all my fish have been down here in the pocket at about eight feet. But later on, when it warms up, look out, we could be in some, for some pretty awesome fishing. Oh, outstanding. Oh, I'm just reeled in. I've got a, uh, a nice shallow bank. I like to work with a bugger, but a fish rose. So whenever this time of year I'm seeing them rise, I'm putting on my big October caddis. I'm going to pull my dry fly out. You know, it's so cool because you can actually even, almost like steelhead, you can skitter it. You can draw, you know, throw it dry, give it a little motion, and skitter it across, and sometimes they whack it. So I know this guy's feeding him like three feet of water. I'm putting the dry on. This could be very, very much fun. So here's kind of what I'm planning to use today. You know, whenever I have... A, October caddis coming off. I always start with the big Miklux. Now you can have them in green or orange. If you look at the caddis that are actually hatching, the big ones, they have an orange body, but the green ones do work. I've got tarantulas here, big attractors. You know, any of these kind of dry fly, big sedge or caddis patterns work. I started small, had that guy hit. So what I like to do is usually start big, skitter them through. If they're not hitting something big, then I go smaller. And I did the reverse, snap the one off right off the bat, but I'm gonna put this gun right now. Give him a shot. Look at that. It's just a gem. Oh, well, that's a tough fish. Holy cow. Oh, he's fighting good. Holy cow. It's not that big, but what a fight. Oh, man. Another nice bow. Now, so far, it's been all rainbows, you know. We've been, uh, been using the, the woolly buggers, which is good, the bulldog, and uh, lots of fish. I'll have to fix that later, because that is a mess. That's what you get when you try to get on the reel sometimes. Oh well, that's all right. Another beauty. Oh, and you know, almost the same size again. What I can do is unbutton this guy, and look at he's darker, right? So he's getting on colored already for the spring, for the, you know, the spring, spring hatch. And when they spawn, I'm just gonna button them. But look at the colors, look at that. Look at that bronzy color. Just gorgeous. It's gonna button them. There he goes. Wow, that was a different color fish, and what a scrap! And now I get to fix this mess. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh. So we've had some really good luck for the boats. You know that bulldog you saw. We got some on the nymph. Just being a great day. But now it's time, as they say, it's time to go with the uh, with the big setup. So I've got my deep seven line on, actually it's my booby line. It's what I use when I'm going fishing tequila. And how similar does that look? That is one of our big purple dragon boobies. Now this thing is ideal for walleye. It goes down on the bottom, doesn't snag up a whole bunch because of the eyes, lots of motion. So I'm going deep to the bottom for the wallies now, it's time. And it should be fun, I think. There's a lot of walleye in the system right now. So I'm hoping it's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be good fishing. We will see. Those wall, I knew they were in there. I knew it. And when I think this guy, I can't even see my, my dragon booby. He inhaled it. But you know the thing about walleye in the Columbia, as, as we've mentioned on numerous shows, they're invasive. So we're, uh, we're going to keep this guy. We're going to pull him out. We're allowed, you know, fisheries, imagine they put a limit of 16 each per day. So you know, you know they're invasive when that happens. All right, let's get him in here. There's there. Little Wally. Oh, he kind of, look at that. He just, he just inhaled the dragon booby. Look at that, they love that fly. And you know, we got various versions of this fly. You know, I've, I've tied him in, in different colors and everything else. So let's go to the bench 
I'm gonna tie you up a version, you know, it's, we should just call it the walleye gem. So let's go to the bench and tie you the walleye gem. Today on the bench, I'm gonna tie you up one of my favorite walleye flies, and it's called the Dragon Booby. Make sure you have these materials ready before you tie the fly. For the hook, we'll use a size one Mustad C70 SD. We'll use some 6 aught black nano silk to tie with. We'll use some UV2 hot pink purple rabbit strip for the tail. Some 15 millimeter plush purple chenille for the body and some nine millimeter yellow round foam for the eyes. So to start the fly off, I've got the, the hook and the vise. And again, I'm just gonna put on my thread and I like a, a nice solid thread for this, like the six aught nano silk is, is excellent because you know, you want a very stout thread when you tie these eyes in. So I'm gonna build up a little bit of thread right near the eyes. Now we're gonna take our nine millimeter yellow foam. Now the foam comes in a variety of different colors. You can see it's got, you know, the whites and pinks and oranges, yellows, grays, everything. But I like the, uh, the I like the yellow. The yellow seems to work well. So I'm just gonna lay right on my hook right near the top. Two really good wraps. Then again, figure eight across, another couple of solid wraps. Pull down quite hard and then keep tying that in. And just keep figurating those eyes in. And now you can see why I'm using heavy thread because you want that to really hold well. Wrapping behind and continue to figure eight those eyes in until it's, uh, until they're nice and set up. Now they have the eyes tied in. I haven't cut them at all yet. I haven't shaped them. I've just tied them at the head. And I've moved my thread to the rear of the hook. I'm gonna take my pink and purple rabbit strip and then start about halfway up the hook and just wrap that in and right, wrap right back to the hook bend. And that's going to tie in your tail. And what I like to do is make the tail just a little bit longer than my, my hook shank. So my shank's about that long, I'll go there and just a little bit longer. It's probably one and a half times the length of my hook shank. Now that we have the tail tied in, I'm going to tie in the body. And you can see this is a very simple pattern, but very effective for walleye. They just love purple and pinks and offsetting colors. So again, I'm just going to tie it in right at the back. And as you pull this material in, wrap it in, it's really bushy, but just keep pulling it back. And wrap it right up towards your eyes. And you even want to take a couple of wraps right behind the eyes because that'll hold your eyes in place and then tie off. Now that I have the body and the tail tied in and the eyes are up front, I'm going to bring my thread forward. So I'm going to actually bring it in front of the eyes and wrap in. Then I'm just again going to do a few more figure eights just around those eyes just to make sure they're secure and butt it up against that chenille I just put in. So it's wrapped nice and tight so they're not going to move. Build up a bit of a head. And before we shape our flies, we're gonna whip finish the thread. Now that we have everything tied in and we're whip finished off, I'm gonna actually form the eyes. Now, the length of the eyes, the size of the eye, I like them about nine millimeters. So I actually take one of my other foam, round foam, and just measure it. So that one's pretty close. This one has gotta be cut right about there. Now I know I've got about two, about the same size. Now, just cut off the edges. What you're gonna do is work around, work around each foam and just cut off the edges so it kind of forms semi-round eyes. And there it is, the finished dragon booby. This pattern in different colors, especially the purple and the pink, works exceptionally well for walleye. I also tied in greens and orange but this, these colors here, this pattern, is definitely my favorite. Sport Fishing on the Fly is brought to you by Maui Jim. Matter of feeding them, so I just force fed them. So a guy bit it, and then instead of pulling back, I just let him, I just fed it to him. Just let it float a bit, and he hit it. There he is, a nice walleye. Oh, I mean, 
little dandy. I just force fed him again. He just barely hooked. Boy, there he is there, another walleye on the walleye gem. Again, key colors for walleye. Can't stress the colors enough. And we've talked about it many times. You know, they, the pinks and purples like this, they love. We also tied you the Hulk years ago. It's got the green with the yellow. Again, try different combinations is perfect. And there's another, another walleye. One of the best eating fish you're ever gonna have. Almost better than, uh, you know, right up there with halibut. It's one of the best white meats you're ever gonna have. So, we got more of those coming up. Beautiful. Thing to remember with walleye, once you get one, you're gonna get a couple. You'll get a few. So they usually sit together. You know, you'll get into a school, there'll be four or five, there could be as many as 10 to 20. And you just keep working that zone. And it's not like they're lazy, but they really like, again, I mentioned earlier, is they love those seam edges. So you can see the faster water out there. And all I'm doing is I've auto anchored in calmer water. I'm casting out into the faster water. I'm letting my fly swing actually down and across, but you can see right here, there's a real calm stretch of water. I'm bringing that fly through this real nice soft water. And that's where they sit, right on the edge of that faster seam in that soft water. And right on the bottom. If that fly isn't on the bottom, you're not gonna get them. So again, heavy lines, heavy rods, rod tip in the water, and just slow strips and keep that fly near the bottom. If you want the rainbows, bring it in quicker. Keep it up higher. And we got, we got rainbows feeding down below on dries. Oh, what a phenomenal time of year to fish. Oh, that's a nice one. Oh, 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 oh. it's in here the whole time. Wow. They're not very big, but look at that. Just nice. So there's a nice, you know, nice chrome fish right there. Okay, pretty sweet. Okay, we're going to net him here. Let's get this guy. Get him in. He's not very big, but again, good scrapper. Nice little guy. You know, a little different than what we've been getting, just chrome. And of course, you whack the bulldog. There he is, right there, right in the, in the corner of the mouth. There. there he is, right there. Nice little chrome bullet. Nice fish. Let's go, let him go back in. Looks like he's got a little injured eye there, but it's pretty good. There he goes. Excellent. I'm already halfway, halfway through this run. <clears throat> I've lost a couple, hooked a couple. Oh, with the bulldog, of course, our little favorite. And look at all, and the bully. He's gonna have to be, gonna have to be put away. I'm gonna have to get a new guy on. That's what happens, right? They just, you know, you get so many fish on it, the hackle gets beat up. You know, it's caught now today. That's caught at least eight. A plus fish, I used it before, now the hackle's all beat up. I time in pretty solid, but it's the way it goes. You get that many fish on a fly? Guy goes in the Hall of Fame. Should be put away with glory. All right, well I think that's it for this spot. We worked it all the way down. We started at the head, we got some walleye. We came down here and we had feeding rainbows all the way through. So again, don't ignore shallow water. Always remember, if you're looking down and it's you know at least, got at least two or three feet, you're gonna have fish there. And I've got one favorite spot left that we're gonna hit. Probably not.
day. He's not real big. So I'm not going to get a great fillet, but pop him off. But you know what? That's a good fish to come off and finish up the show. I hope everybody enjoyed the show today. You know, I tried to teach everybody the key elements that you have to have when you're fishing out here in the fall. Now, three main rods you're going to need. I talked about the dry setup. I talked about the, uh, the indicator setup that we were using. Of course, the two wet line setups. So this one's very heavy duty setup with the heavy rod, heavy line for the walleye. And of course, the lighter setup with the bulldog for the wet lines. But when you come out here, one of these big water. Take care, consume the waters. We'll see you next time when we take the score fishing on the fly. To watch all our latest sport fishing on the fly episodes and to order sport fishing on the fly merchandise, head to www.sf otf.ca and if you like to book an adventure like this one shown head to on the fly and book yourself the trip of a lifetime